freaked out boobs, paparazzi animosity, and a serious glow up, there's way more to Jennifer Garner than a high profile divorce. Jennifer Garner is doing just fine now. According to Us Weekly, she bought a $7.9 million mansion after her divorce from Ben Affleck, but the alias star was born into a family that worked hard to escape poverty. Her father worked as a chemical engineer and her mother went to graduate school and became a professor, teaching remedial reading. Garner shared on Tell Me More with Kelly Corrigan that because her mom wanted money to travel the world, she um, babysat for somebody down the road who had a little bit of money. They had five kids. She'd get a dollar a day. Even though her West Virginia community didn't have much to offer in healthcare, job opportunities, or education, Garner said the people were most concerned with their neighbors' needs being met. The actress now advocates for kids' education in poor communities as a Save the Children artist ambassador. While testifying to a congressional committee in 2017, she said, I knew children in my own school who had to cut holes in the toes of their shoes because they couldn't afford to buy new ones. Children who eventually disappeared altogether. I couldn't stand up for them back then, but I can stand up for their families now. When she's not busy making blockbuster movies, Jennifer Gardner is planting a wildly impressive garden. Her Instagram is filled with photos of her beautiful creations, including massive plants and blueberries that she handpicks for snacking. Gardening is more than just a hobby for Gardner, it's also an essential form of bonding for her family. She told the Well and Good magazine that her inspiration began with her mother, who always grew fresh food. Gardner said, My mom grew up on a little farm in Oklahoma with cows, chickens, fresh veggies, you name it. Everything they ate other than sugar and flour, they grew and raised. When I was a little girl, my mother always told me and my siblings fantastic, vivid tales of growing up on the farm during the summertime, when they would eat like kings, with fresh produce by the bunches and routine delicacies like homemade ice cream. Jennifer bought the family farm in 2017, her mom Patricia told Southern Living. Not only is gardening a big part of the celeb's family bonding time, but it is something she's so passionate about that she turned it into a whole business. Her company, Once Upon a Farm, sells organic food for babies and children. Celebrities aren't really just like us, but occasionally they are. Take, for example, when Jennifer Gardner finished binging The Office for the first time at the height of the pandemic in 2020. Like most everyone else at the time, Gardner had a lot more time to unwind with her family, and her way of unwinding was snuggling up on the couch while binge-watching shows on Netflix. That probably sounds familiar, too. The Office particularly hit a note with Gardner, who grew to love the gang at Dunder Mifflin so much that she felt at an utter loss once she had reached the final episode. In 2020, she took to Instagram to post a video recording her tearful reaction to the series finale. The video showed the actor hilariously sobbing in slow motion as she processed the ending of her new favorite sitcom. In the video, Garner sports a Dunder Mifflin shirt, showing the world that she is the truest of stands. According to Garner's Instagram video, she watched an episode a day with her kids. Oh my gosh, it destroyed me at the end. Holy cow, I was not expecting it. When celebrities are asked to offer their best beauty tips and tricks, they might advise fans to drink more water or to master a nightly moisturizing routine. But Jennifer Gardner believes that the only way to feel better about yourself when you're feeling down about your looks is to stop sulking over your reflection. She told Today, When you start getting super critical of yourself, turn around, pivot in that spot, and go do something nice for someone else. Or go work out, or just take that and make it active instead of letting it just fester in you. Gardner also advises not to place so much value on the outward appearance, since looks are far less important than one's sense of character. She told People that looks just weren't that big of a deal in her family. I was so not one of the pretty girls that I didn't even, I just bypassed insecurity. Yesterday is a family film from the children's book of the same name by Amy Krauss Rosenthal. In the book, the fictitious day requires parents to say yes to any of their children's wild requests, no matter how silly they may be. In Jennifer Gardner's case, she participated in Yes Day with her children by spending the night in the great outdoors at their request. As Gardner shared on Instagram in 2007, she and her kids slept outside in a tent. She had already been participating in the holiday for five years at that point, and this exact Instagram post is 
is what ignited a Netflix movie deal based on the children's book, with Garner as the film's lead. In an interview with Vogue, Gardner explained her family's tradition with the holiday, saying, "...I started reading Yes Day when my middle daughter was three years old and she just became fixated on the idea of a Yes Day, so I started doing Yes Days with the three of them. For my family, it ends with us sleeping in the backyard in a tent. We have s'mores, we have a pool so we'll go for a late-night swim, and we'll play flashlight tag until way later than I would usually let them." Jennifer Garner takes motherhood incredibly seriously, even to the point of making career-altering sacrifices to be there for her children. In her interview with Kelly Corrigan, Garner opened up about how she almost left a major film role so she could be more available to her three kids. The film was Dallas Buyers Club, in which Garner plays an immunologist who treats AIDS patients. One of the only reasons she took the role was because her management team said if she didn't take on another film project, she would have to give up her acting career altogether. But being a mother of three while still breastfeeding posed an incredible challenge. Garner struggled to balance motherhood and her filming schedule. My boobs were freaking out. It was bedtime. And we were doing some scene that was supposed to be light, and I started crying. Oh. And I was like, I have to quit. Fortunately, her co-star in the film, Matthew McConaughey, helped smooth things out and made filming a whole lot easier for her. Garner also revealed to Collider that her kids really missed her when she was gone on long days of filming, and she came home to a note one night asking for their favorite homemade cookies. Jennifer Garner has sparkled on the big screen ever since her feature film debut as Woman in Elevator in 1997's Deconstructing Harry. Since then, she has appeared in dozens of movies and TV shows, managing to build up an estimated net worth of $80 million. Garner now spreads that wealth around. According to Look to the Stars, the actor has supported at least 23 different charities. In addition to her ambassadorship with Save the Children, Garner has worked with organizations including No Kid Hungry, Baby to Baby, Stand Up to Cancer, and Hollywood Food Coalition with Hang Out Do Good. She donated $10,000 to West Virginia's Promise, the Alliance for Youth, in 2020. While most reports on Garner's community work are positive, Mississippi Today spoke with a woman named Tracy Price who claimed she was not helped at all after a visit with Garner. Price said, "...Jennifer came to my house, but I have gotten nothing from anybody since then. I have not received a thing. Nothing. I had my grandkids here and I was losing my house and everything. They never reached out to me." Some might argue that invasions of privacy are what celebrities signed up for, but nobody should feel like they have no right to a private life. That's even truer when it's someone's children who feel like they have no escape from the cameras. On Tell Me More with Kelly Corrigan, Garner described several incidents where her children felt unsafe because of the cameras that were constantly following them to and from school. Garner's daughter, who she says was five years old at the time, had even crafted a speech to speak up against the paparazzi. Garner shared some of the speech, which said in part, "...this is what it's like to be a little kid and to have all these huge cameras running toward you, running toward your mom, and I'm scared of them. They look like guns." Looking back on that, I really feel the stress of it. I really, it may, I could cry. According to the BBC in 2013, Garner and actor Halle Berry spoke up to champion an anti-paparazzi law in the state of California in which paparazzi would be fined $10,000 and put in jail for snapping photos that involved the children of celebrities. The law passed. With all her beauty, charm, and grace, you might think Jennifer Garner would be the most elegant girl in school. Think again. According to the Alias star, she was a massive band geek throughout high school. On Late Night with Seth Meyers in 2016, the talk show host whipped out old photographs of Garner playing the saxophone in her school band. But instead of rocking the gorgeous brunette locks with a red carpet gown that we're used to seeing her wear, Garner is sporting horn-rimmed glasses, bangs, and her band uniform. She even named her saxophone Sally the Sexy Saxophone and gave Seth Meyers the full rundown of marching band procedure. This is parade formation. Clearly, I'm breaking par parade formation to wave to my mom or something. Yeah. In a 2019 People interview, Garner said that in high school, her style was band geek chic. The same year, she got back into uniform and played the sax for Reese Witherspoon's birthday, sharing the video on Instagram. Honestly, what more reason could you possibly need to love Jennifer Garner?